Welcome to Light Over Heat with Professor David Imani. This week, let's talk about guns and risk. The idea that guns are a risk factor for homicide, suicide, accidental death, and injury was a key idea in the gun violence prevention authors workshop that I attended in Hartford earlier this month. And there is a lot of interesting work being done on the relative risks of gun ownership. But I think there's also a very interesting underlying approach to risk in general that we often see in this community. And this I saw in particular in reading the book Dying of Whiteness by Jonathan Metzl, in which he dedicates part of the book to the issue of gun suicide. So Metzl writes, risk helps people identify the possibility of peril in their loved ones and is something that we all want to avoid in our own lives. Risk implies peril, hazard, and the possibility of loss. As a doctor or as a researcher, I believe that a life with less risk is a life that is often longer, happier, and more secure. Risk is something that we should want to study, identify, and ultimately prevent. But is a life with less risk always better? Now, I am very risk averse in certain ways, especially financially, but I also don't drive fast. I don't throw myself out of airplanes. I don't like to be on boats in the open seas. I don't go stupid places with stupid people at stupid times and do stupid things. And all of these risk reduction strategies do probably make me more likely to live a longer, happier, and more secure life. On the other hand, I take risks all the time. In the fall of 2020, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, before I had been vaccinated, I got on a plane and flew to Paris, France. I spent 10 days in a hotel there and also worked with 25 or more other people in an underground space with no windows. Why? Because I wanted the opportunity to string rackets with my son at the French Open. Now, beyond that once in a lifetime experience, I also engage in other risky behavior. As you can see, I'm overweight. I don't exercise enough. I take on work beyond what I'm required to do that adds stress to my life. I enjoy smoking an occasional cigar, which increases my risk of mouth and lung cancer. And perhaps most significantly, those of you who know me outside of light overheat know that I like to engage in a little bit of alcohol consumption. Arguably, the misuse of alcohol is the greatest risk factor for more negative outcomes in American society than any other. Just listen to some of those listed by the Center for Disease Control. Among the short-term health risks of inappropriate alcohol use are injuries such as motor vehicle crashes, falls, drowning, and burns, violence, interestingly, including homicide, suicide, sexual assault, and intimate partner violence, alcohol poisoning, uh, risky sexual behavior, miscarriage and stillbirth, okay? In terms of long-term health risks, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, liver disease, digestive problems, cancer of the breast, mouth, throat, esophagus, liver, and colon, learning and memory problems, including dementia and poor school performance, mental health problems, including depression and anxiety, social problems, including lost productivity, family problems, and unemployment, not to forget also alcoholism itself. Now, despite all of these terrible things that happen in our society because of alcohol, when I visit my family in California, one of my favorite things to do is go to the city of San Francisco and enjoy all of the amazing alcohol that I can get at bars and restaurants and liquor stores. So uh, my last visit, I went to this wonderful ramen restaurant and I got a barrel aged sake. I went to 
uh, liquor store in the Castro and found a bottle of Vita Mescal that I would never find anywhere in North Carolina, not to mention all of the amazing craft cocktails that you could get at bars. And all of this alcohol I can purchase without any restriction other than an ID card. And in my case, I don't even need the ID because I wear my ID on my head and on my face. But God forbid you try to buy a gun in the city of San Francisco. In 2015, San Francisco managed to force San Francisco's last gun shop, High Bridge Arms, out of business. Here's the bottom line. Life is not about eliminating risk, but about being thoughtful risk analysts for our own lives. And as the gun trainer, Will Petty says, risk is our currency and we get to choose where we spend it. It seems to me that those who focus exclusively on guns as a risk factor for negative outcomes don't think much of the ability of gun owners to be thoughtful risk analysts for their own lives. And maybe they're right. If you're a gun owner, tell me in the comments how you think about risk. 